Okay, thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here. So I'm a web developer and I like to make things and do side projects. And my uh, friend and collaborator, Ariel Waldman and I, we have a number of space websites, space themed websites that um, we work on. And we were between projects and we wanted to do something new. And there's something that we thought was missing on the internet that we wanted to see. And that was a site where you could go and just see, very simply, all the active space probes that are out there exploring the solar system right now. Um, NASA has some cool websites, and they have a lot of space probes out there. But the United States is not the only country with a space program. Uh, J China, Japan, India, and the European Space Agency, which is a collaboration of 22 member states, all have active space programs. Um, there's a cool Wikipedia page uh, that's pretty good about um, uh, listing the um, current active space probes. But we're, we love great design and um, beautiful websites, and so we wanted to make something uh, beautiful to look at, sort of an art project, if you will. Um, I was super inspired by this website, how many people are in space right now, <laughs> .com. Um, it's just a very simple, beautiful way to instantly see how many people are in space. So right now there's five, <laughs> there's five astronauts on the International Space Station. Um, and if you scroll on this website, you'll, you can get just a little more information, their names and how long they've been there. Um, so I wanted to see something like this for the robotic probes that are out there in the solar system. So we bought a domain name. Um, <laughs> thank you, country of Spain, for that .es extension. Um, we got cute and clever with our URL, and it's um, nearly impossible to explain verbally um, our <laughs> website URL to anybody. But, um, and then we made a website. Um, so we experimented with a couple of different designs. We looked at um, actual images of spacecraft and um, artist renderings, and nothing was really working. And then Ariel, who's a fantastic visual designer, came up with this um, idea for these cutouts, these silhouettes. Um, and we created this website. So if you load up our homepage um, and scroll, you can see this is all the active space missions, um, all the probes that are out there right now that are still communicating with Earth and that are beyond Earth orbit. Um, and we're maintaining this. We take one down when it, for instance, crashes into a comet, or we, um, when one gets launched and escapes Earth gra Earth's gravity, we add it to the site. And if you click one of those boxes, um, you'll just get a page of information, a summary of the mission, um, the organization is responsible for maintaining it, um, where it's going, what it's doing, and some links to further um, explore things about it. And again, this is international. All, um, all the countries are represented here. Um, we use Jekyll. Jekyll is a static, static site generator. Um, we really liked it. It's, it made it really easy to, for us to work together. She's mostly the design and content, and I'm the techie. Um, and it separates those two very nicely, and it's very easy to deploy. Um, but when we were shopping this idea around to our friends, um, what, we asked them, what would you want to see in a website um, about space probes? And um, we heard this over and over. They want to see data. They want the data from the space missions. Um, but this is easier said than done. If you think about a spacecraft, um, it's like this vehicle where we've attached a bunch of instruments, almost up to a dozen sometimes. And each one of those instruments is a very specialized thing. And um, often they have dozens of people working on instruments alone. And often those instrument teams don't even talk to each other. They're that specialized. Um, and these teams plan the observations, and they handle the data, and they put them out on the web. And it can be very um, distributed to find the data. And also, it's kind of, some, sometimes the data is kind of weird. It's not all tabular data, it's not all images. Sometimes it's multidimensional data, sometimes it's um, um, sensor readings and things like that. Um, not to mention different missions and different countries have different policies about releasing their data. Um, so we couldn't be the portal to all things data for all the probes, but we did find one piece of um, data that we thought um, was kind of cool and kind of connected you to the space probes in real time. Um, and so I'll talk about how we did that. So in my view, there's essentially three main ways 
to find planetary mission data online. The first and most popular is search tools. These are websites where you go fill out a web form and you hit submit and you get results and then you can download um, your results, much like a shopping cart. Um, there's tons of these. Uh, they vary widely in usability. Uh, they serve different communities um, and the, there's, that's a whole ecosystem and a whole domain to itself. If you're lucky, there's an API. If you go to data.nasa.gov, they're collecting APIs here. They're documented. They serve JSON. They're very nice. It's by no means exhaustive, but it's a great start, and there's a lot of cool stuff there. The, uh, the third way is web scraping. Um, there's a lot of cool NASA images, um, NOAA too, um, it, that's kind of locked up in old websites. And so a good way to get at NASA images and data is to actually use web scraping. And I usually uh, recommend a tool for Python called Beautiful Soup, um, because when I was a beginning Python programmer, I, I found it very intuitive to use that. Um, so web scraping is a, um, a way. Sometimes, though, there's an undocumented API. <laughs> um, and that's what we did. So I'll tell you how we did that. So when you send a... Um, a uh, space probe into space, you have to communicate with it. So there's a worldwide network of um, radio dishes operated by NASA. There are three locations on the Earth, and they all have several dishes there, and they listen all day and night to radio signals from space probes. Um, and they have a really cool website, DSN Now, where you can look in real time and see what they're up to. So there's three um, rows here, and that's the three locations. and um, you can see all the dishes there that are active at those three locations. Um, and so if you click one of those, and here I've clicked um, one of the Goldstone locations. Goldstone is down outside of Barstow in California. Um, if you click that, on the right side, you'll see what spacecraft it's communicating with. And it also knows how far away that spacecraft is. Um, right there, it says range. Range is like a term for the shortest distance from one thing to the other. So that's the distance from Earth to Voyager right now, 20.4 billion kilometers when I took this slide. So we wanted that. We wanted that piece of information for our website. Um, so there's this tool, um, it's a Firefox plugin. It's called Live HTTP Headers. Um, there's similar tools for Chrome web, um, web tools. Um, so if you, if you load up a web page and open this plugin, uh, you'll be able to see um, uh, the, the background HTTP calls that the website is making. So you can leave this page and open your browser all day, and it will update in real time what the dishes are doing. And the way it's doing that, it's, it's making a remote server call every few seconds um, to, this, to this other server. And so this plugin will reveal to you what that, what that server is. And the important thing is the URL. So we grab that URL, um, and we open it up in the browser, and this is what we got, um, which is not um, terribly encouraging. <laughs> um, it's kind of a wall of XML. Um, this is my reaction, basically. <laughs> um, but Python to the rescue. There is a Python library called XML to dict, which uh, is a utility that turns XML into a Python dictionary. So it makes working with, Py working with XML much like working in JSON makes it much more easier to read this feed. Um, so now we can see, we can sort of look at this feed and read it. So the top level is DSN, Deep Space Network, and then there's a list of locations. Canberra is the one in Australia. And then there's a list of dishes that are operating when it took this, this, um, this reading. Um, so first it goes through some things about the pointing angle and the time and the wind speed at the dish. Um, but then there's this target field. And if you look at that, um, there's this name field in there, and there's this code. And if you dig into the DSN website, you'll find a list of codes that actually correspond to spacecraft names. Um, so we were able to um, translate these codes into spacecraft names. Um, and then there's that field, upleg range. Um, I don't really know what upleg and downleg means, but range looks familiar, and it, those numbers <laughs> turn out to match what we saw on that website. So that's actually the distance to the spacecraft. Um, so we put this Python script up on Heroku and turned on a Redis scheduler, or I'm sorry, on a Heroku scheduler, um, and it goes off every 10 minutes, and it scrapes that XML feed, and we save it to our own sort of JSON object um, that is ordered by spacecraft code and then takes, 
saves the last distance. Um, we're using Redis on Heroku. It's just a way to save a persistent JSON data store. Um, and then we wrapped it in a Flask app so that we have our, now our own JSON API that is just serving um, spacecraft names and distance. And that is how um, we're able to order these. So these are actually ordered by the farthest distance um, at the top. The space probes that are farthest away here are Voyager, Voyager 2, and New Horizons, which are way out in the outer solar system. And that's how we're able to display the um, distance, the current distance, um, or the, least, the latest known distance, which turns out to be pretty accurately the current distance, um, to the spacecraft. And then we have these clicky things that you can actually reorder by launch date, which is hard-coded, um, but also by distance. So that's how we do that. Thank you. Thank you.